Hey everyone, it's Lucy Fink. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm trying 13 really fun iPhone photography tips that I learned from Instagram Reels and TikTok. If you're anything like me, you've probably been going down these Reels and TikTok rabbit holes recently. Sometimes I find them just purely for fun and I'm just watching them kind of like mindlessly letting my soul be sucked out. But other times I'm watching these videos with a purpose and an intention and that is to learn something and to be creatively inspired. And I've noticed a major trend on these platforms where people are sharing some really cool and high quality tricks that you can do just using your smartphone to capture really cool photos. So I decided to use this video as a testing ground. I'm sharing 13 really cool tips that I've learned and I'm putting them into practice to see if they work. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Stay tuned until the middle of the video. I'm giving 1,000 of you something really cool. But now let's get started with tip number one. I saw this video on TikTok and it features this girl who is cutting out some paper and it's casting a shadow on her face. She actually cuts it out in the shape of a quote and then she puts her face right next to it and is standing in direct sunlight, lets the light hit her face and it says the words on her face. I put my own creative spin on this TikTok video. I did something that perhaps could be seen as a little bit less time intensive. So instead of cutting out small little letters, I just cut the entire sheet of paper into a leaf shape. If you have an actual leaf, you might as well just use the leaf, but I didn't have a leaf on hand, so I cut it into a leaf, and then I taped it onto the windowsill on a sunny day. One thing that's important to keep in mind is if you're using tape that is really opaque, it might actually cast a shadow as well, so you wanna try to use clear tape. I taped it onto the windowsill, I put it in the sunshine. You can see that it actually reflected really strongly back into the space. And then I just sat in front of it and took some creative photos. I wanted to get a little bit artsy with this one, so I pulled my shirt up a little bit. I had the leaf reflecting on my back. I was trying to go for sort of a creative spine effect where the leaf was actually in line with my spine, but it was very difficult to do this on my own because the camera was just self-timer and I didn't have enough time to get in the proper place. But shadows are definitely a really fun way to enhance your photo, just make them feel a little bit more elevated. They take it to that next level. Instead of having just even lighting on you, it gives you something else that's very interesting to look at. I used to avoid harsh sunlight in photos and now wherever the light is, I find it and I love that glowy look. So I would say iPhone photo tip number one was a success. Tip number two blew my mind because I've had the iPhone with portrait mode for years now and I never knew that this was a thing. If you don't know much about photography, let me just explain to you the f-stop when you're taking photos and using a lens. I'm not an expert when it comes to photography, but what I do know is that when I'm shooting videos like I am on this camera right here, I always like the f-stop to be very low. And a low f-stop means that there's a very shallow depth of field. So basically you see me right now and I am really focused. I hope I'm clear and in focus and the background is really blurred out. So I'm shooting this video right now on a lens that has the option for me to go down to an f-stop that's as low as 1.8. The higher that f-stop number goes, the more everything in the frame is going to be in focus. I personally like using a very low f-stop because it makes me look very crisp and blows out the background and I think that makes the photo or the video look a lot more professional. And when it comes to the iPhone, I've known for a while that there is this portrait mode where you essentially need to be a certain distance from the camera and then it makes you focus and it blurs the background. But what I didn't know is that you can press on the little f button on your iPhone and actually lower the f-stop all the way down to 1.4. So I saw this video on TikTok of someone lowering the f-stop to have an incredible selfie hack. It basically makes it look like the photo that you're taking on your iPhone was taken on a professional camera with a professional lens. I've used portrait mode before, but I just didn't know that I could toggle that f-stop super low. And so I tried it here in my living room just to show you what it looked like. I even show you what it looks like when I just take a self-timer photo in that regular shooting mode. Then I go over to portrait mode and I switched from the natural light setting to the studio light setting. And then I tapped on the little F in the upper right hand corner and I toggled it all the way down to 1.4. You can see that as I'm dragging it down, the background just gets blurrier and blurrier. And then I took a few photos and you can see here, this looks like it was taken with a professional lens, but this is just my iPhone and it's actually the front facing camera, which is not even as good quality as the back facing camera. So if this is what I can get with my front facing selfie camera, pretty amazing. So tip number two is definitely cool. Tip number three is 
a standard photo hack if you're ever handing your phone off to someone and you want them to take a photo of you on the street or in front of a building. I've seen this Reels video on Jessica Wang's Instagram. To be honest, this is a tip that I've known how to do for years, but it always blows my mind when you see the difference of photos taken in one way versus this way. So when you first go to take a photo and you're just holding the camera upright, you try to take those pictures and they just don't look good. The angle's weird. You wanna tell the person who's taking your photo to sort of get down on the ground, which is like kind of a rude thing to tell someone to do, especially if it's a stranger. But instead, if you just hand them your phone, you turn it into panorama mode and you have them turn it to the side and then pan up on you, you're getting so much more in the shot. You can even get some sky in there. And it really just does make a way more interesting finished product. I think the best thing about my final photo was the colors. I actually used an app called Quick Shot to add in the sky effect at the end. So the sky was pretty overcast and white when I took the original photo and then I added in a purpley blue orangey sky. It all works really well with the color of the building and the door and the color of my coat. And at the end of the day, looking at a photo like this where you have this extreme high angle and you're seeing so much of the frame, it's just a lot cooler to look at than just a straight on shot of you standing in front of a door. So I'm a big fan of photo tip number three. And if you are a tourist or you're ever taking a photo outside in your city, try going with this method instead to get that wide angle cool shot. All right, photo tip number four. This is more of a tip for people who are taking photos of products. So if you're a lifestyle photographer or you work with brands and you're trying to photograph products in an interesting setting, especially now that we're all locked down at home, if you don't have many options of studios to shoot in, you can create a really interesting scene at home just using a mirror and your laptop. So I saw this really cool TikTok where a girl pulls up some cotton candy colored clouds on her computer screen. She puts a little mirror underneath and then folds the computer down a little so there's a reflection. She completes the scene with a bunch of flowers and then she puts a piece of jewelry in there and she just takes a few photos and it looks really professional. You get the background that has those colors you want and it's also reflected in the bottom of the image. To be honest, it's just a really creative idea and you can kind of get crafty with the background image you choose and go for any vibe. So the only mirror that I had in my apartment that would fit on my computer keyboard like that was one of those diamond shaped mirrors that I have hanging in my office. So I took it off the hook, I put it on the computer keyboard and then I grabbed a couple of dried flower bundles from my wall. I searched for clouds on Google images and I just pulled up a full screen image of clouds in the sky. I put the flowers all around it and then I took off my wedding ring and my wedding band to photograph those. I styled the scene, I changed back and forth between a regular photo and being a portrait photo. I experimented with different angles. I was trying to keep different areas of the photo in focus at different times. I even turned on my desk lamp, which really looked a lot like sunlight and I aimed it directly at the scene. And here are the final photos that I captured. This was just using my iPhone. I'm convinced that if I pulled out my professional camera with professional lenses, I could have gotten even better quality images, but this was pretty good for just my phone. So for anyone out there who takes photos for brands, whether you're shooting jewelry or just like really tiny small products, this is a cool way to create an interesting scene just using that mirror reflection. Photography tip five is creating your own mirror reflection on the street. I saw two TikTok videos that I'm basing this on. So one of them, they had a bottle of water and they just poured out a little bit into a puddle and then used that puddle to reflect a person. And in the other one, they actually took one of those circular flat mirrors and put it directly on the sidewalk and then had a person walk kind of close to it and it reflected them that way. I initially tried the water bottle method in the middle of a street in New York City. I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of a fail. I poured the water into the sidewalk and it basically just like dripped away and started running down the street like it was urine. It didn't really pool and puddle the way I hoped it would and the reflection shot was not that good. So what I did instead was I just took a little walk and I found an area of the street where there was already a puddle from a recent rainfall. To get the best photo for this hack, you have to turn your camera upside down so that you're as close to the puddle as possible. And then whoever's taking the photo just needs to tell the subject where to stand to make sure they're being reflected properly. The finished product of this was okay. I think that I made it a lot better by by enhancing the colors and through the photo editing. I tweaked the sky a little bit to make the color palette a little prettier. And then I even added some overlay elements on top to make the photo cooler. So I added some of these bokeh glittery lights. And then I also added some fake rain in one of the photos just to see what it would look like. And it was pretty cool. Both of those were added using quick shot also. Tip number six is a creative idea that I found on Reels. And it's basically getting a photo of yourself from inside of a chip bag. And in order to capture that illusion, you have to actually open one end of the bag and then cut the other end off. So yes, you do need to have a backup storage method for the food afterwards because you've destroyed the bag. I used a bag of pretzel 
bubbles, so I cut the end off the bag, and then I set my phone up on the windowsill. And by the way, it's great to use a windowsill as a light source. I wanted it to look like the light was coming through the bag. I actually made sure my phone was upside down once again because I wanted the actual camera to be as close as possible to the pretzels on the table. And then I just took a handful of photos in self-timer mode, and I made it like I was reaching into the bag. I made some funny faces. And this is just a fun and creative way to add some movement and life to your photo. This just got me thinking about Instagram and how everyone sort of takes similar style pictures. And you know, if I wanted to take a picture eating a bag of pretzels, instead of just holding up the pretzels and smiling, it's a lot more interesting to take a photo like this where the viewer is inside of the bag. So just keep thinking like that whenever you're going to take photos and you wanna share them, especially if it's for an artistic purpose or a creative portfolio, just get creative with your angles and your creative direction. Photo idea number seven, I saw this one on Instagram Reels. I thought it was very clever and very creative and I wanted to try it myself. So this is another tip that uses your computer. You search for a photo of Earth on your computer and take a photo of it on your phone. I made sure all the lights were off in the room so that it was pretty dark and you know easy to adjust that brightness on my phone to get a nice shiny photo of Earth. I used a tripod for this so that the photo was consistent and I could take one photo of the Earth just alone and then one photo with my hand right in front of it. And this is the easiest way to do it if you're gonna be matching up the two photos. You wanna make sure that your camera is locked on a tripod and it's not moving from frame to frame. So once I had the two photos taken, I pulled them both into an app called Pixar and I added them one on top of the other and then erased the hand over the earth. And when you do that, you're basically making it look like the fingers are going behind the planet. Then I just experimented with adding some sticker effects like some galaxies and stars. This particular photo got me thinking about how far technology has advanced. The fact that 50 years ago, a photo like this was not even doable in a high budget Hollywood film. And here I am with this device in my pocket taking this photo and editing it myself. That's really cool. Tip eight is creating a bokeh flare effect using your own glasses and a spray bottle. So I saw this one on Instagram Reels. She takes a pair of glasses and sprays it with water. And then whoever's taking the photo just puts their iPhone right behind the glasses lens and takes a photo of her. What's important here is you wanna make sure you're focused on your subject and you can hold down that autofocus and auto exposure on the subject. Then put your iPhone camera behind the glasses lens so that those water droplets are out of focus. The photo that was taken in the real video that I saw was actually really good. It looked like real bokeh flare on this girl. Michael was busy doing work when I shot this, so he couldn't take a photo of me. So instead, I tried taking a photo of the shelves in our entryway. And I specifically did it during a time of evening when it was golden hour and there was some sun streaming in. And the finished product around the area where the light was hitting did look pretty cool. I can't say it looked exactly like perfect circle bokeh flares, but it was pretty cool. If I was gonna give a tip to someone Someone who is trying to take a photo like this, I would say try to shoot into the sunlight. If you see the sunlight, that's where you're gonna get those really cool reflections, but wherever the sunlight is, is where those water beads are gonna look the most expansive and look the most prevalent. Towards the bottom of the photo, it's not as cool. You can't really see the beads there, but I mean, it's kind of a cool trick. The next photo tip is another Reels video from Jessica Wang. She's teaching you how to take a photo on a busy street corner when there are cars going by and people walking in the background. Most people would just take those photos and capture other people or other things in the images. But what she does is she turns on the live photo mode and then takes a couple of photos. And the key here is to stand incredibly still and have the person who's taking the photo stand incredibly still. And then after a few seconds of stillness, you can open up that photo, swipe up and switch it to long exposure. And anything that was moving in the background of the photo should look like a complete blur. So the thing that's really hard about this is you have to stay really still. And it's harder than you think to stay still. And even for the person who's taking the photo, it's really hard to stay still. So I actually tried this out using my tripod on the street. I set up the mini tripod, I actually set it upside down again to get that really low angle shot, and I tried to stand as still as possible and took this photo. There were a lot of taxi cabs going by, people walking by in the background, and I have to say the long exposure did get rid of all of that, but I just don't think that I stood in a really good spot. I don't think my scene was particularly set up well. Even though the Empire State Building is visible in the background. I felt like I needed to use quick shot again and change the sky 
tried to make this photo somewhat presentable. So it's definitely not the best photo I took. The lighting was pretty bad. As you can see, my face looks sort of gray. The other thing was I had this parked car in the background of my photo and it was obviously not moving, which means that it wound up in the back of my final shot. If you are gonna do this, I would highly recommend finding a scene where there are no parked cars and that way there's a lot of movement going on, but as soon as you switch to long exposure, everything goes away but you. That's what Jessica's photo looked like. There were just buildings and her. So that's a strategy if you are planning on implementing this tip. This whole video is about learning new skills and trying new things. So now let me quickly talk to you about Skillshare. If you've been watching my videos on YouTube for a while, you will know that I've mentioned this incredible online learning platform before. And I'm giving the first 1,000 people who click on the link down below in my description box a free trial of the Skillshare Premium membership. And then after that, it's only around $10 per month. Skillshare has thousands of inspiring classes for the creative curious souls, which I know many of you are. From courses about taking care of plants at home, like this one from Plant Queen, all the way to a course that is very relevant for this video right here called iPhone Photography, how to shoot and edit conceptual photos on your phone, taught by Amelie Sotsker. There really is a class for everyone on Skillshare. This is the perfect holiday gift for someone who's creative and curious and has felt like they're in a bit of a rut. I am such a fan of continued learning and I think it's amazing for people to sign up for a membership that lets them take endless classes. And with your Skillshare membership, you can connect with fellow creatives, you can enter a community of encouragement and inspiration, and just always have new ideas. So once again, I'm giving the first 1,000 people who use this link a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership, and then after that, it's only around $10 a month. The next trick was found on TikTok, and this is a video of a person who uses another person's phone as a mirror reflection when taking a photo of something else. In his image, he is taking a photo of a bridge and he puts the other person's phone just on a black locked screen underneath his camera, and it reflects the bridge up at him. And I decided to replicate this with a cityscape of New York City featuring the Empire State Building. This one was really cool. I didn't expect it to be this cool, but I think the coolness factor is totally dependent on whatever you're taking a photo of. So I just took Michael's phone, I put it right beneath my phone's camera. I had to get the angle right and play around with it a little bit before it looked perfect. But then I snapped a couple photos and when I edited them, they looked great. This is a really fun and simple way to get cool photos if you're ever just out and about with a friend. If you see a really cool building with awesome architecture or if you're walking and there's a really pretty vista in front of you, this is a cool tip to try. Up next is using someone else's phone as a flashlight and shining the light through some glass. I saw one version of a girl using a prism to get some interesting light on her face. In another one, she just used a cup. I think you can experiment with various types of glassware you have at home. I just decided to use a mason jar because the bottom had an interesting ripply effect on it. I took Michael's phone, I blasted the flashlight, and then using my phone, I just took some photos. And I decided to go moody with this one, so I turned the lights pretty much off in my apartment, and I blasted the light on me against a blank wall. I think the darkness contributed to what made the photo interesting the light through the mason jar wound up looking almost like water on the wall behind me. It had this very serene yet artsy feel to it and I kind of like it. Speaking of artsy photos, I found another creative camera hack on TikTok. This one involves holding down that auto exposure and auto focus and lowering it a lot to make the background really dark. If you can stand in front of a black background for this, that's best. And then with your phone in live photo mode, you just take a couple of photos as you're looking right at the camera and then turning left and then turning right. I didn't exactly know what to do or how to get a black background for this, so I took my ring light and I draped my yoga mat over it upside down. Then I sat in front of it, I had my phone on a tripod right in front of me. I even turned on a light to just blast some harsh lighting on my face here. And I took a handful of photos looking in all directions, making sure to turn my head pretty fast, but making sure I was capturing specific photos in each specific direction. And then when I turned on the long exposure, I was getting some incredibly artistic shots. After I edited these photos, I have to say, they look really interesting and really professional. These were taken on my iPhone, once again, in the front facing camera. And these look like the type of thing that a photographer who's really high quality, who was working in a whole studio setting might take with a professional camera. Perhaps a professional photographer would tell me that that's not true, but from my untrained eye, I think it looks pretty cool. I turned the graininess up to make it a little bit grungy, and the finished products are a lot more interesting than just a standard photo where I'm facing the camera or turning to the side. So this is a cool effect that you can do to any photo where there's motion just to make the final photo look more interesting and creative. 
This last tip is something that I have done before. It's using the panorama feature on the iPhone. So it's basically the type of photo where you're doing one thing in the beginning of the panorama and then you pause midway through and you either get into the panorama on the other side so that there's two of you in the photo or you're using a mirror reflection and you just change something up so that you look different in the mirror. I've seen a whole bunch of these on the internet and the possibilities are endless when it comes to getting creative and making your own version of this. I tried one version on the street where I was posing for a photo and then as soon as we paused midway through, I ran around Michael who was taking the photo, I put my jacket on and then I got into the photo as the photographer. So the final version of this photo has two Lucy's, one is taking a photo of the other and it looks like the outfits are different, which is really cool. I took another version of this at home with my plants and you can see that I'm on both the left side and the right side of the photo here playing with my plants. The key to doing this is you need to make sure that as the person is taking the panorama, first of all, they pause right in the middle when the little arrow is pointing at the spot just before you want to change. Also, it's best for you to run around the camera like backwards so that you're not seen moving from shot to shot. I couldn't run around Michael in the indoor one because there was no space behind him. So I actually got down onto the ground and slithered underneath the shot and then came up on the other side. The shots are not perfect. They definitely do create a bit of a fisheye type of lens. It's not 100% great, but you can see that you can get really crafty with this, especially using a mirror. I've seen some really funny ones and I would highly recommend just putting on your creative thinking cap and having a blast with this one. And those are 13 smartphone photography tips that I sourced from TikTok and Reels. If you like this video and you want to see me do more TikTok and Reels trends, give this video a thumbs up. Comment below to let me know which of these photo tips was your favorite and also share links to TikTok videos or Reels videos that you love. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I love trying new things like this and putting them to the test. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining and I'll see you next time right here in my new York City apartment. Let's take a quick selfie. See you next time.